My name is Julianne Gilbert and I first came to Bahrain in 1979. Until that point, I had lived in Suffolk in England, although my parents were from Scotland. I was the eldest of three children. My father was an accountant, my mother was a teacher, and an opportunity presented itself to my father to come and work for the Ministry of Ports as an accountant. And I think the educational package was one of the things that made him want to come to Bahrain. He saw a great opportunity for his children's education. When I first came, it was the summer of 1979. It was the summer holidays. I was 14, I was dreading going away to boarding school and I mainly remember the heat and a sense of fear really of going away from my family. But then I remember very clearly arriving back for the winter holidays and it was another world. And of course the flags were up, the national day lights were on, it was cool. I remember driving down the hill to Awali and just a, an oasis of lights really, absolutely beautiful lights. And then a winter holiday just full of new experiences, meeting new cultures, vibrancy, colour. Um, I remember a red crescent bazaar and thinking, gosh, look at all the different traditional dresses. I remember a midnight mass in Awali church and thinking, wow, look at the colours of all the saris. I remember a friend of my father's, Mubarak, coming to visit us. He was a fisherman and he brought us a big bucket of crabs. And I remember my mum coming out of the kitchen and saying, they're all still alive. And the crabs were crawling around the kitchen. But I just remember a feeling of generosity and warmth and excitement. It was a very seductive place. I think wherever ever you live, you can get into the habit of seeing your workplace, your home and the supermarket. But Bahrain, it is really worth exploring it further. I know as a young person, I remember enjoying the Hash House Harriers, the walks and the runs for families all over the country. I remember um, the traditions we had as a family every New Year, climbing Jebel Al Dukan and saying goodbye to the old year with the children with a little campfire as the sun set and then taking them home to bed and we'd go and celebrate the real New Year. When we were newly married, we were lucky enough to live in East Rifar. Um, it was a beautiful, beautiful villa far from expat land, um, where there were all sections of society and all ages as there should be in every community. Um, I remember when my first child was born, all the neighbours coming and celebrating with us. And actually, I really remember the first Ramadan when I was up feeding a new baby who wouldn't go to sleep and looking out of the window and you know those traditional like the drummers and the was it whistles or bells to wake people up during Ramadan early in the morning it was just such a special feeling to be immersed in that I think the thing that runs deepest in the Bahraini culture is the welcome the welcome to absolutely everybody. Not just a tolerance in society, but an appreciation of the diversity um, and the ideas and the creativity and the forward thinking that that brings. One of my most special memories of living in Bahrain was I was in hospital, had given birth to my first daughter at the BDF. I will always be grateful to the BDF hospital for their help during the birth of my four children, but I remember sitting in my room and there was a knock on the door and four men in pristine white thobes looking absolutely amazing came into the room and there was beautiful, beautiful flower arrangements, chocolates and sweets on trays and a very special little card and it just said, with the compliments of the Emir of Bahrain and my daughter is named Isabel 
after Shehisa. I think another of my most special memories um, was to do with the workplace, but I was working at the British School of Bahrain in Adlia, and we merged with a school called Al Ruad School, where all the members of staff were Bahraini, and the BSB were all expats at the time. There were 16 infant teachers, I was one of them, and we had a community of maybe 300 children signed up for a school that actually need, none of the parents had chosen to start with. It was really make or break. And I will always remember the chemistry between those 16 women. I remember Miss Sanna broke the ice. she just had a new grandson. She came in with a big tray of biscuits with the grandson's name on it. And we all celebrated one of the most important things of life and we managed to embed that culture into the school, very much combining the British with the Bahraini. So in my work, I do quite a lot of talking, an awful lot of listening, but quite a lot of talking. So when I'm at home, I'm actually relatively quiet. I'm lucky enough to have the pool outside to swim my laps. And I would say any little bit of leisure time I have, I fully unwind by relaxing into a good book. My name is Tom Gilbert. I've lived in Bahrain for over 40 years. Uh, all of the important things in my life have basically happened in Bahrain. I met my wife here. All of my children were born here. Um, I've worked here for almost all the jobs I've had, I've, I've had in Bahrain. Uh, the, the success, any success that I've had has, has been a reflection of, of the life that I lead in Bahrain. So I feel uh, very, very lucky to have lived in this country. Uh, I feel very lucky to have worked with the people that I work with. I feel very lucky uh, with the family that I have. We live in the most beautiful part of Bahrain and it's really hard to, to say which is the most beautiful part of Bahrain, but I get up every morning at half past five, I walk my dogs for an hour at six o'clock and I I am always blown away by something. It's either the color of the sky, it's the color of the clouds, it's uh, the hoopoe bird that comes out to say hello in about two weeks time, he's there and then for four months. The, the farm that we walk past with the dogs, uh, the beauty of my dogs and the beauty of my garden. Uh, Jid al Hajj, uh, I don't know if people in Bahrain have been to Jid al Hajj, but if you haven't been to Jid al Hajj, you need to go to Jid al Hajj because really genuinely, it's the best part of Bahrain. So you've heard a lot from my wife and from my two of my four children about how the community here is, is such a central part of, of everything that we do. Uh, obviously for, for Bahrainis, the family is, is the center point of the culture and is the most important part of the culture. But I think what is absolutely fantastic about Bahrain is it reflects and it takes on cultures from other people, other places. And, you know, again, I, I don't know about you, but my guess is that you got Christmas tree, you got Christmas presents, you got Christmas trees, and, and it is most unusual, I think, for cultures to, to take on and to admit that, to, to, to accept that feeling of other cultures have things to offer us as well, but Bahrain really has been one of the places that has taken that on more, than I think, than anywhere else, honestly. Every single one of my best memories is in Bahrain. Now, whether that is getting married, whether it's holding my daughter for the first time, uh, whether it is, uh, you know, something stupid like my puppy is being born, every single thing that has been important to me has happened in Bahrain. So I, I'm sure I have memories of places apart from Bahrain, uh, but quite honestly, the only ones that matter are the ones that are here. My daily, my daily life, I'm very lucky. At about 5.15, sometimes 4.30, my wife wakes me up and tells me it's time to wake up. Um, so that's always a good start to the day. Um, and she does it kindly and gently and, you know, sweetly. Um, after that, 6 o'clock on the dot, pretty close every morning, I walk the dogs for an hour. Um, so the beauties of Jid al-Hajj, I can tell you just about every single leaf that is on the road as, as we walk around um, and then drive into work. You'll hear people complaining about Bahraini traffic. 
Honestly, if it takes you 15, 20, 25, even 45 minutes to get to work, try going to Riyadh, try going to London. Uh, you know, really, genuinely, we, we have so little to complain about. So go to work, come home, and then it's usually, um, uh, we, we sit, uh, we will sometimes watch television, we will sometimes sit in the corner just where you're sitting and read a book. Uh, we will occasionally, depending on what the weather's like, I'll sit outside of my hammock and watch the sun go down and the stars come out. But uh, there's always something to do. Hi, my name is Isabel Gilbert. I am 28. I'm a teacher. Um, I'm British, but was born and raised in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Um, I live in Dubai at the moment, but I miss Bahrain every day, all day, um, and can't wait to be back living here properly. <laughs> so I went to school here, spent my entire childhood here, and my favourite thing I think about that is I still have the same Bahraini childhood friends that I had as a child. Uh, I come back every month from Dubai to visit them, to hang out with them, um, be it just at home in the Malus, hanging out, or in the desert or in the sea, depending on if it's winter or summer. Um, so I'm a teacher and I think part of the reason that I've gone into that field is not just because of my mum, but because of the excellent teaching I had here at the British School. Um, I loved going to school here. When I left Bahrain to go to university in the UK, I found it incredibly hard not having the comfort of Bahrain. I used to say to my friends, I study in the UK, but I still live in Bahrain. And that was really honestly how I felt. I remember the first time I came back and I was flying from London and they announced on, on the plane, we're now commencing our descent into Bahrain International Airport. And I burst into tears, full on sobbing because I was so relieved that I was coming back. And that's, I still feel like that. I come back every month from Dubai and I still feel like every time the captain says we're commencing our descent, I'm immediately relaxed and so excited that the country that developed me is within my reach. I'm so close to being back. <laughs> there is nothing better than Bahraini society, if you ask me. And I, I firmly believe that. I've lived in four different countries as an adult and Bahrain is still the best. The multiculturalism, the tolerance, the welcome that Bahrainis have for anyone and everyone cannot be beat. And I truly mean that. It's the most special place because anyone from any country, from any creed, any culture, any religion can turn up here and will be welcomed because it's a, it's a huge melting pot. Everyone mixes. It's my favorite thing that I could, you know, when I went to school, I had 21 children in my class at one point and there were 19 nationalities. We all mixed together. I know so much about different religions, different cultures, different different kinds of people because Bahrain is the melting pot that it is because we all mix and it's encouraged and the Bahrainis want they say come please let us show you let us welcome you I've had gone to so many amazing iftars and suhoors with my friends in Ramadan just from a from a child because everyone's invited everyone's involved it's it's one of the best things uh, about Bahrain special memories in Bahrain oh I don't even know where to start with that my every good thing I think that has happened to me in my life has happened here. I have made incredible friends. My best friends now are Bahraini. Um, and if I had to choose a memory, God, I don't know what I choose. There are so many. They all, all of them revolve around my friends and my family and being here, hanging out, not even doing anything in particular, just being together. There's this real sense of togetherness that that you get here that you don't really get uh, anywhere else. I think it's really funny growing up as an expat in Bahrain. I was born here and raised here my whole life and Bahraini culture has become my culture. In the UK, you don't take your shoes off when you walk in someone's house. You don't go to the eldest person and say, Salam Alaikum, you don't, you don't do that, but I do. And people laugh at me because they're like, you, you have integrated so much into the society that you've become one of us. Bahraini culture has become your culture. But I think that's something that's so special about this place, is you, you become it. You spend enough time here and you become it. Um, you know, I've spent so many evenings sitting on a sufla, having malagum, having machbus, having tikka, 
my favorite, which you just cannot get anywhere else that's as good as it is here. Um, and it really, I think the food and the culture really envelops the welcome and the warmth that you get here. It's such a big part of it. You know, we're, I'm sat cross-legged on the sofa with, at, at three in the morning having suhoor with my Muslim friends. I'm a Christian and we all sit together and it's something that you cannot, you can't get anywhere else. Growing up here, Bahraini customs were, I think, part of every single part of my life. Whether it's how you greet someone, how you go to a wedding, how you spend your Fridays. It's something that's really important here. I love seeing families all together on a Friday. It's an unwritten rule that on Friday from lunchtime, everyone's busy, please don't contact us. We're with our family. Thank you very much. We'll see you later or we'll see you before. Um, Bahraini weddings, I've gone to some incredible weddings. And I remember the first time going as a young teenager and all the women looking just absolutely beautiful and the dancing and the fun that was had um, certainly is something that I notice no longer living in Bahrain, but living in the Middle East. Bahraini culture is, it's the hub of culture. It must be, it's, it's, it's great, it's the best. I am incredibly proud to have been born and raised here. I will tell anyone that will listen that I was born in Bahrain and that I am Bahrainia. And I will say that until, until I'm blue in the face. It's the best thing about me is the fact that I grew up here and I'm so lucky that I'm still able to call this, this place my home. My name is Joe Gilbert, I am 19. Uh, I was born in Rafat and I really feel like it is such a welcoming place uh, living here. I always feel like I can be myself, like I can be open with all my friends and it's just such a comforting environment to be surrounded by. So what I really, really enjoy about living in Bahrain is being able to go go out on the boat on the weekends and just driving around the sea, visiting the sandbanks, going up to Jurada, uh, going around seeing all the little islands scattered around. Um, and the sand is always so soft, it's always so white. It's, it's never like sharp, it's just always a lovely, a lovely, comfortable environment, it's nice. So being born here, I've interacted with Bahraini people my whole life. Um, I almost feel out of place when there are no Bahrainis to interact with. Like it's what I'm used to doing, it's the culture I'm most, I feel most at home in. Uh, and it's like, I just, I miss it whenever I'm not here. Growing up here, I feel like I've developed at, with the help of my mum a lot, my parents, um, and being surrounded by Bahraini culture. Like I've um, grown up, like, I feel like a more generous and a more welcoming person. I feel like I've developed um, in that way very well. Um, I feel like if I was raised in a different environment, I wouldn't be as kind to people or as nurturing to people. Uh, and I'm very grateful to Bahrain for that. I would say I spend a lot of time uh, outside or in the gym. Um, it's, I, it's what I enjoy doing. Uh, I walk my dogs every, every now and then. My dad wishes I walked them more, but I, I do what I can. Um, yeah, I play a lot of rugby as well. Um, I'm hoping to play for the national team soon. So yeah, as I said, I, I played a lot of rugby here. Um, I've been playing the rugby club since I was six years old. Um, my dad forced me to go. I didn't enjoy it that much at first, but I started uh, enjoying it more and more as I grew up. And I've been able to represent Bahrain uh, at youth level uh, in Dubai, Abu Dhabi. Doha, Oman, here, and I, I have enjoyed every single second of it, especially when representing my country. I have been working in the field of education for 35 years. After training in the UK, I worked in London for five years, and then returned to Bahrain, where I've been lucky enough to teach a range of ages, ranging from two-year-olds in nursery school to 82-year-olds who would like to learn English. I've worked at the Japanese school, at St. Christopher's School, and the British School of Bahrain has really been my second home for the last 20 years. At the moment, I am the head of the infant school. When new families arrive in Bahrain, often the school is one of the first places where they meet other people. But actually, people simply being in the same place at the same time doesn't build a community. The community comes from people with a shared goal, 
people working together with a common vision. And luckily, we have the common vision. We all want the best educational outcomes for the children. So to get the community going, it's up to us to provide opportunities for parents to be in school, whether it's to join in assemblies, to help with reading, to go to showcases of the curriculum or performances, um, to provide opportunities for them to be part of what we do. Further up the school, our oldest students are lucky enough to benefit from something that we called Beyond BSB, where we invite parents, guest speakers, uh, partners in industry to come and speak to students about their experiences in their field of work which gives the students an, an advantage when they're applying to some of the best universities in the world. There are also spectacular annual events like the International Family Fair or the Festive Night Market where the community pulls together for an extravaganza for the students but also to raise money for local charities and it gives the little communities within the school, an opportunity to showcase their own culture and their own traditions. So the British curriculum is one of the educational systems that's most widely taught throughout the school. It's one of the best systems for teaching creativity, critical thinking and flexibility and leads towards an, an end product of good GCSE and A-level results. We are lucky enough in Bahrain, as an independent school, to be able to adapt the curriculum to the local context so that it's meaningful for the children. And we are also supplemented, complemented, supported by the Ministry of Education. So we have an excellent Arabic programme and a citizenship programme and, of course, an Islam programme. I think in the educational field, the more diversity, the better. Um, I think the different, th different ways of thinking, striking against each other, leads to much more creativity. Um, for decades, the UK has benefited from Bahraini students joining the British universities. And what's so lovely about Bahrain is that so many come back to contribute to society here after their international experience, which is probably why the pace of change and rapid progress is so fast. Both the United Kingdom and Bahrain are societies where they really values, value the, the ideals of respect, tolerance, um, opportunity for everybody. I would say in Bahrain in particular, perhaps the size of the kingdom is quite small, perhaps the essence of that tolerance is condensed, where it actually becomes more than a tolerance of different communities, but actually an appreciation of the different communities and the different cultures um, leading to more creativity. I think on a personal level, one of the things I'm proudest of are my four grown-up, very different children. They have benefited hugely from growing up in Bahrain. I feel they're happy in their own skins, happy to mix with everyone, all levels of society and all cultures. I think my whole family has really benefited from living in Bahrain and I hope that my work at the school has been a way to give something back to a country that I've known and loved for so many years. In my years at the school I have talked and talked and listened and listened, it's been a very active role. Perhaps in years to come what I'd like to do when I have a little bit of peace and quiet is to write about all my experiences. My wife and I both lived in Bahrain a long time before we worked. Um, our parents both lived here, uh, worked uh, in, in my mother's case, in my stepfather's case, with Babco in Awali. Um, and we lived in Rafah, uh, and then we lived in Awali uh, for, for a long time. Uh, it was a boarding school in Ireland, uh, and then boarding school in Scotland, and then university in Scotland, and then worked for a short time in the UK. But uh, I think if, you are 
a, a long-term expatriate, it is, it's very hard to fit in where you apparently come from. Um, and Bahrain for me was always home. Uh, I think one of the, the smells of Bahrain that, that maybe we lost when we got the new airport was you used to land in the, in the Gulf Air TriStar and they used to open the doors and there was this smell that came down the airplane which was a mixture of kerosene, uh, humidity, maharig and, and palm trees and, and that was the smell of Bahrain that I always looked forward to and always made me feel as though I was home. Um, and so when you're working and living in, in the UK uh, and you find yourself getting up in the dark and walking to the train station in the dark and getting rained on and then going to an office and then coming home in the dark and walking up a very steep hill in the dark and getting rained on and taking a suit off and hanging it up over the over the bath and doing the same thing exactly the next, exactly the same thing the next day, and then thinking, well, you know, maybe I could be in Bahrain and I could, you know, be in the sunshine and I could do my water skiing and I could do my sailing and I could break squash rackets in the in the Awali squash courts. All of those things became much. They were they were a route for me. They were a way of of me knowing where I was from, and so. I've done many, many, many different jobs. I, the, the, I think the idea was that I would do any job that I could so long as it got me to stay here in Bahrain. So I taught Arabic, uh, English and IT to the Amiri Air Force. Um, I was the deputy head of communication language studies at Mahad al-Bahrain al-Tidri, BTI in, in Isatan. Um, I then went back to the UK and retrained as a primary teacher. Uh, came back, worked at St. Christopher's, then moved from St. Christopher's to the British School, not when it was in, in Hamala, but before it came to Hamala, it was in Adlia. Um, and, I, and I think at one stage, I just about taught every single child in, in, in the school from year three, which is uh, seven and eight year olds, up, up to the very top of the school. And then um, we had too many children and not enough money, so it was time to try and find something else to do. So. I was very lucky, I got offered a job with Ernst & Young in, in their business development function um, and I helped set that business development function up and then they decided they wanted to have a global oil and gas centre of excellence so I went and became a global oil and gas expert um, and both my father and my stepfather and my father-in-law were in oil so that, that at least I think brought it home a bit and then um, I worked for a Bahraini-owned company in aluminium dross processing for a while and then I moved to Dubai, but uh, you go... One of the very different things about Bahrain and, and many, of the other, many of the other countries in, in, in the GCC is in Bahrain you work with Bahrainis, you meet Bahrainis. You guys can't see this, but the crew in front of me who I'm speaking to now are all Bahraini. They all speak English, they're all fantastic people, so you've got multi-skilled, multilingual workforce. Um, and while my wife went on to bigger and better things at the British School, I uh, work with a professional services firm in Bahrain. Uh, we do a lot of work in Bahrain, we do a lot of work in Saudi Arabia. Um, and I'm, my role is to try and support the growth of the company. I think the Irish community and the Bahraini community and the people of Ireland and the people of Bahrain are actually in many ways very similar. That there are both Ireland and Bahrain are islands surrounded by the sea. Uh, there is, uh, and if you go back a couple of generations, in both Ireland and Bahrain, there's a healthy fear, a healthy uh, respect for the sea. And uh, we have had Bahraini friends who never went on the water. Just it was, it was not the thing that their mothers would allow them to do. Um, there is a, a huge role for religion. Uh, there is a huge role for family uh, and then I think there is there's a sense of fun that is in both the, the Bahraini community and the Irish community um, and I think one of the things that, that uh, really comes out of, of that is that there are a number of, of 
we have some really good Bahoni friends who are actually married to Irish people. Um, and the children, the, where you have that half Bahraini and half Irish piece, uh, are, are some genuinely of the nicest people you'll ever meet. So I work in a firm with over 100 people. Uh, we are a mixture of Bahraini and non-Bahraini, um, and, and we are probably about, about half Bahraini. But the, it's the bits that aren't Bahraini that I think are really interesting. So we have Indians, we have Irish people, we have Pakistanis, we have Filipinos, uh, we have Bangladeshis, we have um, Iraqis, we have Egyptians, we have, so there, uh, we have Lebanese, we have so many different um, nationalities and so many different cultures that come together. And I, I think that in the same way that the school is a microcosm of that mix, that, that a professional services firm where that mix is a reflection of the people that we work with, uh, a reflection of the clients that we have, is an incredibly strong proposition that you can bring to the market. I think one of the fantastic things about Bahrain is the quality of people that you get here. Um, and of course, I'm biased, but I look at my children and I think that my children are the best possible blend of their mother and of me and of their grandparents and me, but they're also a huge, huge reflection of the society that they've grown up in. And I am incredibly proud of, of all four of those children and how all four of those children have turned out. Um, I think another thing, and this maybe is, is slightly um, more personal, is that I think Bahrain has, has really benefited from the talent and the abilities that have come from outside. So in the same way that you know, we as, as individuals have benefited hugely from being in Bahrain, I think that there are certain people, and I would definitely say that my wife was one of these, who have added so much more to Bahrain, Bahrain as a society and Bahrain as a culture um, than, than really probably can be measured.